Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have with me Jean Martineau from Dynacor Gold Mines. He's the president and CEO of that company that he founded back in 2006. Uh, he has worked in the Canadian mining industry for more than 30 years as a director of junior gold mining companies and as an investment broker as well. During the last 20 years, he has focused on South America and has acquired an in-depth knowledge in the management of natural resource companies in South America. His Latin American expertise has been of prime importance in the development of Dynacor Gold Mines operations in Peru, and that is absolutely true because there are other people that have tried to put uh, Gene Martineau's uh, business model into effect in Peru and elsewhere and have not had the uh, the success that he has had with Dynacor, in large part, I think, because Gene has taken this time to build the company the right way to establish good relationships with people, uh, and uh, he, he is a very smart businessman. He's done extremely well. Uh, so I'm really pleased to have Gene with me again. Thank you for joining me today, Gene. Good afternoon, Jay. It's a pleasure to be with you today. It's really good to have you with me, and I guess you're going to be heading back to Peru very shortly. Is that right, before Christmas? Uh, well, tomorrow I'll be on a plane uh, flying from Toronto to Lima. Uh, from Toronto to Lima. Okay. Yeah. How long a flight is that, Gene? Oh, it's an uh, eight-hour flight. It's a direct oh, not flight. Too bad. only a direct flight from Canada, so lay out Toronto to Lima. I say it's eight hours in the same yeah. uh, time zone, so it's, uh, it's interesting for that. Nice. Right. Very good. Okay, well, Dynacor Mines, uh, Gold Mines, uh, trades on Toronto, in Toronto under the symbol DNG, and you can buy it down here in the States under the symbol DNGDF, as I have. 36.5 million shares outstanding, Gene. That's remarkable. You've held the number of shares down because you've grown the company from internal sources of cash flow. I see in the United States today it's priced at $1.38 in U.S. money. That gives it a market cap of around $50 million in U.S. money. And what I really like about this company, Gene, is your very unique uh, business model, which I think reduces the risk from what most junior mining companies uh, experience, and um, you you go out and buy the um, you buy ore from small miners, and there's many of them in in Peru, uh, and you're able then to sort of lock in a profit margin. So if the gold price goes down, you might not make quite as much, but you still make a, a healthy margin. If the gold price goes up, you make a slightly higher margin. Do I have that right? Yes, exactly uh, what it is, because we buy all uh, based on the gold, the international gold price, and we keep a margin on this uh, roughly a uh, gross margin of about 17%. So if the gold price goes up or down, we, we, we keep our margin there. It's less if the gold price is a little bit lower, but it guarantees us that at almost any gold price, we earn money and uh, we can uh, pay for the development of the company with this. You are you are profitable this year again. Uh, I think there was a hiccup or two early in the year having to do more with government regulation. Do I have that right? Yes, in the first uh, quarter, the government uh, uh, just uh, do, did a lot of investigation about uh, we had to prove the pro the, the uh, where it came from every ounce of gold exported uh, in, in Peru from uh, camp by companies uh, which don't operate a mine. So and uh, there was a uh, uh, negotiation between the small miners in the country and the government uh, because, as you know, they are in the formalizing process there, and they wanted a couple of years more more time to uh, do all this process because it's not an easy process for these guys who you can understand are not uh, uh, they don't have any uh, university degree so. Uh, it's uh, to to uh, organize a campaign. It's a little bit complicated. So in the first quarter, there was some uh, production loss, but now we're back uh, at full uh, full capacity. We have increased at the beginning of this year the mill capacity to 250 ton per day, but we haven't been able to work at full uh, capacity before mid of this year. And now it's working uh, full uh, at full capacity. It's going very well. And in the last uh, months now, it's a uh, it's uh, just uh, going very, very well. So uh, actually, we are 250 ton per day, and uh, we uh, prepare us to increase this uh, mail capacity again, probably to 300 ton per day in the coming months. Okay, what do you expect to earn this year, Jean? What, what sort of uh, per share earnings? are? Have you given guidance on that in a range? Uh, 
uh, we haven't uh, given uh, guidance. The guidance we've, uh, we uh, we have given was on a production around seventy thousand ounces of gold because of the uh, the first uh, quarter uh, uh, lower production on the, on the first quarter. The second quarter started uh, a little bit uh, low too, so we may be short of that. By maybe one uh, one thousand one thousand five hundred ounces uh, of gold, but uh, we have generated in the first three quarters. Uh, uh, it's uh, thirteen cents per share, uh, so we should be this year a little bit uh, lower than last year. Last year we have generated twenty five cents per uh, per share. This mm-hmm. year will probably be around uh, nineteen cents per share. But uh-huh. as I said, we're back to full production actually. And just based on the uh, on the actual production at 250 ton per day, uh, we would uh, process in a full year uh, close to 80,000 ounces of gold. So remember that in 2013 we have processed 76,000 ounces of gold. And uh, so next year, if we don't move the capacity where uh, from where it is today, we would be at 80. So next year will be a, a quite an interesting year too on the production side. Uh, Jean, I understand, um, first of all, I lost a little bit of the audio there, uh, when we were talking, so I'm not sure you might have covered this, but I think that, um, you, so you've been producing at the Akari mill, that's where you've been producing, and you're planning to build another mill that is, has a lot of different advantages, I think location, access, and so forth, at a place called Chala. Uh, how is that going? Well, uh, this uh, we we're still waiting for the permit. We had uh, uh, a lot of delays, and uh, we think that is uh, it's linked to uh, all this uh, formalizing process the government is uh, is underway now because they began that two years ago, two years and a half ago, and uh, it was supposed to be done in two years. Now they have uh, put uh, gave, uh, given another two years to complete that. So it's uh it's not an easy situation it's a little bit complicated uh but we have applied for this uh this permit and uh, we uh hope to have it uh, as soon as possible uh, I don't have any date on this but during that time we have continued to increase the the one camel capacity to increase the one camel capacity mm-hmm. so we were 220 ton per day per year uh per day at the beginning of uh uh, last year, we began this year 250 ton per day, and we expect to continue to increase that in uh, 2015 to uh, 300 ton per day. So mm-hmm. when we're gonna uh, be uh, ready to start the Chala mill, uh, we're gonna be already at 300 ton per day. So mm-hmm. uh, we don't lose any time on this uh, on this part. We're increasing the capacity anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's not going. Uh, it's going pretty well. And the uh, the grade is still very high. We are able to attract uh, the, the the highest uh, gold grade producer because we have uh, the best uh, recovery rate in this uh, in this sector in Peru. Uh, we have, we recover uh, up to 94, 95 percent of the gold in that. And I remember uh, you that uh, it's a mix of uh, more than 250 different mines that we we put together. So it's not an easy job to do that, uh, having a so high recovery rate. And because we have a high recovery rate, we're able to attract the best producers. And yeah. uh, we have a highest uh, grade in the, in, the, in the head grade, so it, it, it helps us to produce more too. So it's, it's a very good situation. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing that you're able to get those kind of recoveries from the grades that you're getting. But I suppose that you, obviously, if you're having some real complex ores or whatever, you just wouldn't uh, wouldn't accept those probably. I mean, because there would be, you know, there's a roasting or something like that you don't do. So if uh, no, I'm so sure but, that uh, there are some uh, kind of ore that we can process. Uh, uh, that's for sure. But uh, yeah. remember that behind that we have 16 years of experience in that field. We have a network of uh, uh, guys going all around the country to visit these uh, these producers to select that and uh, to attract the best guys. So it has been a long process, many years, because when we began that job, uh, we had a recovery rate like the others, 72, 75 percent, because mixing a lot of go off all together, uh, your your recovery rate uh, uh, comes down uh, quite fast. Sure. So sure. over the years, it has been uh, we have been able to improve that. And today we're very proud to say that we have uh, 
the best recovery rate uh, there, and that's why we can attract the best guys because more or we recover from there, or uh, we can pay them a better price. So this is this is the idea. But uh, we need uh, like uh, we've been in this business for uh, 16, 17 years now, so that's yeah. why we've been able to get there. Well, Gene, you know, most mines, uh, they're lucky to have 16 or 17 years of mine life. How much mine life is there from the small miners? I mean, how many of these guys are there? I mean, is there any chance that you're going to run out of ore anytime soon from uh, from these small miners? Well, you know, in uh, in Peru, uh, uh, they, they, they are... Uh, Thousand and thousand and uh, tens of thousands of miners in the country. Uh-huh. Uh, they mine all over the country. We buy ore from uh, well, uh, probably around 250 different uh, miners, and you have thousands of them. So uh, you had these guys mining in Peru for almost since Peru exists. Mm-hmm. And uh, it won't be tomorrow that it's going to stop. So if one miner uh, stopped to work, we can easily replace them, uh, replace them uh, by another one. And because we have a very good recovery rate, it's not very difficult for us to replace this guy. So uh, we don't have any reserves as a, as a mine for 10 years or 15 years. I think we have much more than that because uh, there, is, uh, uh, there, there are so many miners in the country that we mm-hmm. can buy uh, from uh, many, many guys. And it's not tomorrow that this business will, uh, will, be, uh, will be over because uh, uh, they had 70,000 uh, informal miners that got involved in the formalizing process. And uh, so how many will go to the end of that? It's difficult to say today. But it gives you an idea of uh, how, many, uh, how many guys are working in there. Uh, yeah. So so many so many of these guys, and we work with 250 of them. Jean, uh, what I find very exciting about your company is not only the fact uh, that you've been able to grow the company organically, little by little, but also your Tumi Pompe prop- property, and you have there three different kinds of ore. Talk to us briefly about you're expecting some fairly uh, some production to come from Tumi Pompe. You have some very high grade ore there that you're expecting to produce from, and as I understand it, possibly at Chala if the mill is built in time, or if need be, uh, going down to Akari. Uh, you, you can take the ore, because it's of high grade, to either place and make it work, and, th- and that will be a higher, uh, a higher margin than what you're getting from the uh, milling that you're doing of other people's ore. Is that right? And can you talk to us a little bit what your plans are, uh, the three different kinds of ore that you have at Tumi Pampa, uh, and just let our listeners know what the prospects are there for that company, because I think that is really the great blue sky potential that comes from Tumi Pampa. Yeah, you're right on this, uh, G. We have uh, up to now identified three uh, mineralized, uh, very important mineralized zones. The most, uh, uh, the most uh, explored is uh, the zone where we have these uh, identified 15 veins of very high grade. The average grade there is around half an ounce per ton, uh, so it's very, very high. We have identified, as I said, more than 15 veins. One, the major one, is the Mount Dorado, which is up to 7.4 meters wide. And uh, we did a cross cut last year when we went through uh, the Mount on the ground, and the average grade there was uh, 22 grams uh, mm. Per ton, which is point nice. seven point seven five ounce per ton on the walls, and it was uh, more than one ounce per ton on the roof of this uh, cross cut. Oh, so nice. it showed yeah. that it's very high grade. It's uh, it's thick. It's it's quite thick. So the idea with uh, the the mill, the actual mill, the new mill, uh, we want to transfer the actual production to the new mill in Chala when it's going to be built, and the actual mill could uh, be used. As a pilot plan, for example, when we're going to mm-hmm. be ready to begin to extract some more from Tumi Pampa. So mm-hmm. we won't have to wait until we have uh, fully developed and explored the property and have, let's say, uh, X amount of uh, uh, reserves in, uh, in, in ounces of gold on the property. But we're going to be ready to, uh, we, can, we could extract 100 or 200 or 300 ton per day and track it down to the one Camel, uh, use it as a pilot plan and uh, do all the, uh, the metallurgical testing on this. Uh, it's going to serve as a prefab or a feasibility study. Uh, it's it's going to be a wonderful tool for us to develop that part. And mm-hmm. uh, at this grade, if we have 
at the end, uh, this uh, uh, half an ounce per ton, it's going to be economic to track it down to eject the actual mill, process it there, and even tracking down there, we're going to have a, a higher margin than on the margin we have on the oil we buy, actually. So that would be economically a very good uh, operation. But beside that, it's sure that on the long term, the idea is to build a mill on the spot because uh, we're going to save on the transportation. We're going to sure. earn mon- much money. But we're going to be able this way to begin probably production much sooner, much more rapidly than we could usually because you know that to have all the permitting for mill is much more complicated than to have uh, the permit uh, to to extract ore uh, from a mine because where sure. you have your mill, you use chemical, you need tailing, uh, you know, you need all that. You use water, so it's much more, uh, much more study, much more uh, environmental impact study, uh, mm-hmm. much, uh, much more work. So it, it, it's going to be delayed uh, some years. But with this actual mill, all permitted, we could uh, begin to uh, to uh, to to produce that much faster. And during that time, we're going to be able to continue the exploration on the disseminated, on the scarred. We uh, did a lot of exploration in 2014, but it was more uh, like surface uh, uh, sampling, uh, geophysical studies that are not so, uh, I would say, sexy for the market. Sure. They are fundamental, and it's first, uh, you have to do that at the beginning. And we did a lot of this year, a lot of uh, infrastructure work like uh, rebuild the road completely. Now we ha- I've been there uh, 10 days ago. I was on the spot in Tumipampa. The road mm-hmm. is now it's just wonderful, uh, very, very much uh, shorter to go there. Uh, we have a, a very good campsite. We have Internet on the spot. Uh, now we have a permanent uh, settlement there, and we're mm-hmm. going to be able to accelerate our exploration, which we want to do in 2015. Mm-hmm. Because we did a cross cut last year, as you know, of uh, 300 meters uh, deep in the mountain. This year we're gonna, uh, we just started, and we're gonna uh, dig that uh, past uh, 700 meters uh, mark. We're gonna begin in the coming weeks a second cross cut parallel to this one. After that, we want to join these two cross cut on the ground, going uh, through the Mount Dorado. So we're gonna have a lot of interesting exploration uh, done in 2015. Well, you sure do, and those are all drivers I think that investors should really be watching. I should tell my listeners, I, I, I guess I actually did, that uh, uh, the Dynacor is one of my top picks. It's one of my top holdings personally. I love this company because of the ri- limited risk on the downside and because of Tumi Pampa. I think you have a tremendous upside potential there. One last question. We're out of time, Gene, but before we go, how much cash do you have in the till, and how far will that take you towards these, uh, towards the building of Chala and uh, this exploration work you're doing uh, up at, uh, at Tumi Pampa? Well, actually, uh, well, at the end of the third quarter, we had $14 million in cash in the bank account, so I expect by the end of this year we should be uh, $15, $16 million dollars. Uh, so we had the, the Chala mill, uh, the budget for that was $10 million. We already spent uh, $2.3 million. So we have another uh, $8 million to spend there. So we have all the money in the bank to pay for that. We have all the money in the bank to pay for the, all the two, 2015 exploration campaign. Oh, that's uh, terrific. Uh, Pampa property. And uh, we are getting in uh, these days... Uh, close to uh, one million dollars in uh, free cash every month, uh, between probably eight hundred thousand dollars and one uh, one million dollars. So mm-hmm. we have more cash than what we need uh, to de- to develop that. So we're going to be able to accelerate the exploration on Tumi Pampa. Oh, and wow. as soon as we get the Chala permit, we have all the cash needed to pay for that without any dilution. Oh, that's just really marvelous, and this is why you've got only 36.5 million shares, Gene. Congratulations on a fabulous job you've done uh, over the years for us shareholders. The, uh, the main thing is, with 36.5 million shares, you didn't talk very much about the SCARN, but you have some major mining companies, big guys that are really interested in your property as well, and when the time is right, you may invite them to come in, because these will be very, very large projects if they uh, go forward. Uh, but that, uh, to me, if you have some sort of a major discovery on top of the other things that you know you have now, with 36.5 million shares outstanding, the upside can be marvelous for investors. And that's why I think you know it's so important 
the share dilution issue is so important, so I really want to thank you, Gene, as a shareholder for uh, for helping me and the rest of the shareholders. I really think my listeners should pay attention to this company. Gene, we're out of time. Thank you so much for being with me. I look forward to talking to you again sometime in the near future. Well, thank you very much, Jay. It's always a pleasure to be with you. And uh, we uh, keep in touch. And uh, when you need, uh, when you want some uh, some updates on the company, I'll be very pleased to come back on your uh, on your radio show. Very good. Thank you very much. 